the reason, uh, just to nail that down, the reason I see it as useful in terms of uh, facilitating either the experience of awakening or the um, the embodiment of awakening is that if you participate in a constellation, you really have to drop being you in the moment and allow yourself to be led as you surrender to something else, some other way of knowing, some other way of being. Uh, in other words, t you take on the um, energetic package of the person you're representing in the service of healing in the field, right? So that is what I would call an example of acting from no mind because you couldn't possibly know how somebody's grandmother would feel in a given. It's not possible. And often you're given no meaningful data about the person. And the fact is you don't seem to need it. So by stepping into the field, you are surrendering your mind to the great mind, you know, so to speak. It's a temporary thing. But in other words, it's possible to live your whole life that way, but it's a taste of it. And I think that was one thing you said, is that when you, you did constellation work for so many years, you were very good at entering into this field of no mind or of emptiness as, as a facilitator and a participant. And you wanted to have that experience all the time, right? which is, makes sense because it's so free. So I, I want to explain that that because that's really that's really I think the essential point where where I actually had this awakening in life eventually happen because when and as a, as a as a participant you will have that same experience and those who have already participated will know that you don't need to do anything you don't need to know anything in fact i'm telling you the less you know and i give you very little information the less you know and the less you are having your sense present as far as I need to do something, I need to accomplish something, I need to be a very good representative, the more you can drop this and really be empty so that whatever information shows up through the body can fully take hold and then have you notice that the body suddenly gets so heavy that you are collapsing or that you feel like you just want to wring this person's neck that's across the road, I mean across from you, yeah? Where something develops in the body that is completely not yours, but is happening in your body. And you don't know where it's coming from. And you have your own voice still there. Your, you know, your, your, your witness hasn't disappeared, but you're noticing my body is doing something and I have suddenly this these feelings and sensations appear that are not mine, but yet here they are, and you know, I'm asked not to follow them and allow them to manifest. And so what happened for me as a facilitator, first of all, learning the work, I had to, you know, for several years as I was studying this work, I, 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 I was a, a, a representative as much as I could, and I loved the experience because it's so free. And so, and you learn so much in the process too, that, you know, it's not of the thinking mind, like Michael was sharing, yeah, the awareness of this young man feeling they want to be there for their wives, they want to give to the baby, they want to provide all they can, and yet somehow, you know, they can't, they're just overwhelmed, it's not possible, there are only so much they can give, and yet, yeah, it's like these dichotomies with which we all live and yet nobody really allows themselves to talk about them. So if you stand in as a representative, you learn about life, the depth of you know human existence, which we usually don't talk about or allow ourselves to even experience. So I had that as my basis, and then as, as I became, uh, you know, as I was moved to do the work as a facilitator, then I was in a different field, then I was no longer, uh, uh, you know, feeling the different positions as, as an individual, I was kind of the, 
the guide of the whole field. And again, I didn't need to know anything. I didn't have to be a therapist who studied all of these different things. The more I could put Margot aside and be completely empty to be guided by the field and by the representatives, what they were showing me, that was a sure way to get to a good outcome. If I had any wish or any ideas come in my head, oh, I should do this, I should do that, that was a sure way to fail, <laughs> to not make the constellation go good. So I had to learn all of my thinking capacities and my will and my intent and my wants and, you know, that judgment, oh, this person is bad because they murdered somebody or whatever. I had to put all of my thinking mind aside and make myself really empty so I could, like, what you were reading, the perceiving, yeah? You could, I could then perceive what was really necessary in the field for healing to take place. Not what I thought was right and wrong, or who was the good or the bad guy, but what actually the family field showed and what was and is the appropriate movement for healing to come back, no matter what happened. So whenever I was in the field, I felt like I was just carried. I didn't need to know anything, I didn't have to put anything out, it was just, okay, now this, now this, yes, sometimes there wasn't information coming forth, so I had to wait, which Michael shared at the beginning, yes, sometimes you just have to wait, but it was always an assurance, somehow it will come, and yes, it always did come, and it was always amazing, the end result was always amazing. And yet, when I left, when the constellation afternoon or weekend was over and I walked out, I was back in tomorrow. I was doing life again from my thinking mind of, you know, judging and worrying and anxious and how do I do this now and where to, how to, yeah, how we, how we normally do life. And that became so painful because I knew there's another way of doing life. I experienced it there and I could, you know, be a facilitator to, to help heal things for people that they may have carried for years and years and years and have not been able to heal in any other way. And so it was so painful to be in that thinking mind again. And eventually I started to say, I want to live from not knowing in my life out there. I want this effortless flow, this delicious, magical way of life in my life. So that was a prayer that really rang for me for a long time. And I had no idea what was necessary so I could actually do that out there. A whole collapse of the whole thinking mind and the, you know, the belief structure of what we need to do life and how life is supposed to go and what is all of that by which we all live and do, you know, our social <laughs> environment. I, you know, all of that had to break down so I could actually really do in my life, life from not knowing. So, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. where. Thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs>